Hello everyone and welcome. On today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to set up publishing services here in Lightroom 5. Publishing services are located within the library module. They'll be on your left hand side down here. And you'll see a list is hard drive, Behance, and Facebook. These are by default, you know, the ones listed. But if you can actually get more publishing services and uh, from uh, Adobe's website, by just clicking on, you'll find more publishing services online. The ones I'm going to be showing you today are how to set up, you know, for the hard drive and for Facebook. Now, essentially what this is, is an export preset for your hard drive. And it also is the same for Facebook, except that it'll be automatically uploaded to Facebook for you. First one we want to set up here is for your hard drive. And so just click on set up and you'll be a prompt with this little dialog screen here. And there's really not a whole lot to this, but I'll briefly go over everything. Description for this one, since I'm gonna be setting uh, this one up is to export TIFF files. I'm just simply going to call it TIFF, you know, for prints. Okay, now for demonstration purposes, I'm going to this set to desktop. And we put in the subfolder, you know, TIFF prints. And as far as file renaming, we're not going to worry with that one. There's no sense to, but if you want to rename these, then you can use this. For this uh, demonstration purposes, I'm not going to use this one. And also, I'm not going to use video. Now, so I'm going to uncheck include video files. Simply because if I have any video, I'll be editing those in a different uh, editor and not using Lightroom. For file settings, uh, since we're exporting to the hard drive and I want these for prints, I'm going to choose TIFF. Compression, I'm going to choose ZIP, which is, you know, compression files. If not, you'll end up some very large files, very comparable to your, already, your raw files you already have. To get the most color, I am going to use Profoto RGB. And the bit depth, I'm going to leave at 16. 8 bit and 16 bits is your uh, options. Now, if you want to, you can use JPEG, and it has built-in compression, but keep in mind, JPEG is by default sRGB, and uh, which is screen RGB, and only use 8-bit color depth. So if you're gonna be uh, printing these out for photos, I highly recommend to use TIFF. And of course, 16-bit color. Transparency, you know, there's not an option no real need for that since these files will be for photos anyway. Image resizing, I am not going to mess with uh, resizing any of these for you know the photos and stuff here because I want to be the max resolution possible. And we're going to leave these at 240 pixels per inch. Now for the most part uh, I'm going to explain the pixels per inch for you. Unless your printer that uh, company that you're going to use to print these has a specific option you know about 72 dpi is normally screen resolution uh there's no real need to change this in your first pixels per inch most modern printers these days will use uh 800 to 1000 2000 dpi anyway and this is about the same uh pixels per inch resolution that your camera outputs to so I would not worry about pixels per inch. It's not really that common to use these, uh, these days. And just focus on having very large images. Like my 20 megapixel file for most DSLRs is quite adequate to print, you know, two foot by three foot uh, canvases without any issues. So I would not really worry with that one. But always check with your uh, printing company they're gonna be using if there's any specifications. If they say 300, uh, there's really no sense of changing this. Most uh, printers will actually scale it out anyway. Output sharpening, would not even bother with this one. Uh, you should be doing all your sharpening anyway within Lightroom, so forget about that one. I'm not sure why they even really included. I would never use it. 
metadata. Now this one is totally up to you. I do recommend uh, to at least keep copyright and contact info. You know, if you want to leave all the other information, like a geolocations and whatnot, you know, you can include those if you want to. I personally will, you know, at least leave copyright and contact information. Everything else this is like camera, camera raw information. This will be like a, well, I'll show you here. Let me cancel this. This is more as the information you see over here where the mouse cursor is. And the capture time, the capture date, the dimensions, the crop dimensions, exposure settings, you know, camera, the lens, even your GPS if you have that. That'll all be in that location information. Okay, let's click back over here again. Now, the only other option left is watermarking. Now, for prints, I would not recommend using a watermarking because people find that very tacky to have a watermark on a photo they just paid for. I know some uh, companies do do this, they put little gold emblems and stuff on them. That's through their special paper, but as far as a watermark actually in embedded into the image itself, if you're selling these or these are for a customer, I wouldn't recommend it, but that's totally up to you as well. Okay, now our other option here. Oh, okay. Let me save this one. And there you can see we now have TIFF export set up. Now let's set up Facebook. This is another popular one everyone uses. And we'll simply call this one Facebook Photos. Okay. Now one of the things you'll have to do is authorize Facebook and Normally, if you've been using Facebook, your browser already have a lot of the information and have you already logged in by default. And this will pull that information from it. So let's just click on Authorize on Facebook. And it'll tell you Terms of Services, blah, blah, blah. Click OK. And it will pull you up for Facebook. And just simply click Connect. And there you're done. And as you see it, it says I'm authorized as Joe Wayne Jackson Jr. Okay. Now I can choose here uh, the album. You can choose where you want to put these. Now I have a lot of albums up here. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go create a new album. Album name is, uh, what do you call this, uh, Tutorial. Not worry about location, uh, album description. Lightroom tutorial. Privacy, everyone can see it. I don't really care. But you can change the privacy if you want to. Options are friends only and friends of friends. I'll let everybody see my photos. Okay. And now, there it is. You can see tutorials now on the list. And if you want to, you have to click on Go To Album and that actually pull Facebook up and go straight to that album. But we're not going to do that. But I just want to let you know the option is there. It's uh, basically a shortcut. Okay, let's close that one. Then we have your Facebook title. Now, IPTC title. Now, if MTC says use file name, but if you want to know what the IPTC stands for, IPTC stands for, uh, let me see, I had it wrote down here. <laughs> yeah, Interna uh, International Press uh, Telecommunication Council. Uh, that's your title. You'll find it over here. It says title and caption over in your metadata where it says mine here, you know, copyright 2004, excess photography, creator Joe Jackson Jr., you would find that with your title in right here. And then you see I've been lazy and I have not put any titles in. And I probably really should. But if it's blank, it automatically use file name. And you can choose it to always leave blank if you want to. Or choose by default file name or leave blank. And I'm gonna leave mine on IPTC title and try to be a little more proactive and actually label my photos. Okay, and it says here when updating photos replace existing title 
or leave existing title. This is only if uh, you got a file of the same name and automatically update it for newer versions. So if you go in and upload one photo, realize you color was off, white balance is off, and you don't want to be too embarrassed, so you upload a new one, this will automatically update it for you. So you don't have to have existing files and it basically deletes the old one for you. File naming, I'm not even gonna mess with that one. That's there if you want to change it for custom names. Video, I don't include video because I don't upload videos through Lightroom. File settings. Now this one you see is grayed out. And this is for JPEG. Now my default mine's on 80. However, between 60 to 80 is where I recommend. Perhaps maybe 75 or 70 might be good for you. Uh, I wouldn't go less than 60 unless you're just really wanting to get the image smaller. But I wouldn't really go no higher than 80 because you're really not going to tell much difference. And realistically, these are for fo Facebook. These are not something you're going to put on 500px. But they'll let, they'll let you adjust the quality. So the options there. And for image sizing, now for sharing photos, especially like on Facebook, the photos really don't show too large on the screen and you don't want to spend all day uploading a photo if you have slow internet like I do here in the Philippines. So what I recommend is between 800 to 1280 pixels. Now 800 is fine for most two by three uh, images that you haven't cropped down. But if you have like a large uh, panoramic file, you may want to go up to 1280 pixels so that way people can actually see it. You don't want to you compress it too small. You seem to lose a lot of the detail and it's hard for people to really enjoy it. But normal pictures, I think between you know 800 to 1280 is fine. Uh, mine's set on 960 by default. I believe that's the Facebook standard and that's what I actually think would probably be the best uh, size right there for Facebook. Output sharpening, again, you should sharpen everything, you know, while you're processing it. I would not turn any extra sharpening on. Metadata, again, this is up to you. I would at least leave copyright and contact information. That way, if somebody sees it, they know it's copyrighted, and they have information to contact you to, uh, if they want to, you know, use it commercially and get your permission or buy a product from you but I leave all metadata in mind that way people can see what I shot this as to kind of help other people get better too. Now watermarking. I do highly recommend watermarking any and all photos you upload online. I have actually a video I've already put out about this. You should uh, check it out on my website. It's all talks all about you know watermarking and uh, copyright issues, you know, people getting uh, stuff stolen online. So keep everything watermarked. Unless you really don't like it, that's up to you though. My recommendation, uh, recommendation, put a little small watermark over your lower left or somewhere discreetly within the photo that is clearly visible but not distracting. Now, as you can see, I got my label simple copyright watermark. But I have a few of them here, uh, basic left, basic white, you know, I think I have a basic discrete, discrete lower bottom. I've created quite a few. And I'm actually going to put out another video all about creating watermarks, you know, here pretty soon. So, you know, keep a uh, lookout for that. And just simply click save when we're done. And as you can see, we now have a way to upload photos. Now, I'm going to go here and click on one of my collections here. And I think I got some called canvas prints. And I want one of these to put on Facebook. So let me choose, uh, let me see, let me choose this one. Now, I'm going to upload this one to Facebook. And this is simply just drag it, drop it, put it right there, then click on it. And you can see there's one there, it's listed here. And now all you gotta do now is simply hit publish. And you can see it's updating tutorial. 
and that means it's actually sending the photo up to Facebook and you're done now when you go to add more to this little publishing services you can actually keep up with the ones you got on Facebook through here this is not actually another full copy it's more like a virtual copy of all your files that you have so if you want to keep up what you got on Facebook you can do that through here and you can actually set multiple occurrences of this up as different folders so that's simply it folks that's simply how to set up publishing services for both your hard drive and uh, Facebook hey everyone I hope you liked this video if you did you know, hit the like button down at the bottom but most importantly if you like this type of content and you want to see more hit the subscribe button and when you get done hop on over and check out my website if you want to learn more about existing photography the blog website is the place to go. Thanks everyone.